uh, part C. Uh, don't worry about the fact that this is so long. I was really looking for, like, if you had a quarter or a fifth of this answer, that was okay. The reason my answer is so long is it because it includes basically all the different possibilities. So I just kind of lumped them all together. The best way was to say the fundamental theorem of algebra. And from there, if you said anything that was sort of common sense, you were fine because you knew what you were talking about. Most people did not say anything about the fundamental theorem of algebra and how many roots something is going to have. That was the easiest way uh, and the quickest. Um, not going to dwell on this one too much because it was very well done. Use the sum and product of roots, etc. Um, the second mark was for getting one of the variables you were looking for, and the last mark was for getting both. Uh, partial fractions, also done pretty well. So thumbs up on that. The errors that I saw were mainly arithmetic errors, so I'm not going to dwell on them. You guys are pretty good at that, which, by the way, please make sure you revise that before you get into extension to integration, because you'll need it. Okay, question 13. Now let me just pause. Uh, oh, no, it's 13B that I'm talking about. Okay, yep, this is fine. Um, first mark for getting the gradient of the tangent. It's a show question. You guys know none of the parametric equations on the conic are, um, on conics are quotable, so you had to do this. And the second mark was for using some kind of point gradient form. You really need to say something like that. Uh, and getting to the result. Okay. Now part two, I won't dwell on it. You probably feel bad if you got this one wrong because basically you didn't know what a perpendicular was or you didn't recognize that that was a different to a normal. Normal, perpendicular, okay? A normal is perpendicular to the tangent at that point on the graph, right? Whereas a perpendicular, it depends on the features that are mentioned. In this case, it was the y-axis. So that's why I know my line is running that way, okay? Uh, you've got to get both lengths. A lot of people kind of uh, did a poor job of finding what the lengths were or didn't reason why they were what they were. Two marks. Show me. Show me. Right? The, the, the mathematics of it's not difficult. You have to reason through it. Okay. 13B. Take a deep breath for a second. <sighs> Hold on to your hats. Now, that... Drawing up there is my reminder for myself to look at these. Oh, sorry. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just put your pens down for a second. This is chocolate fudge. Chocolate fudge? Okay. This is caramel fudge. <laughs> this is walnut fudge. One of my favorites. Okay. What's my point? My point is, people... I know fudge, okay? Markers know what fudge is. When you have a question, have a look at part B. One, two, three, four parts. Every single one is a shown result. They give it to you, you gotta prove it, okay? The number of marks that people hemorrhage because they're like, I don't know what I'm doing, ga ah, ta-da! There it is, okay? Don't think that we don't know, okay? We wrote these questions. We recognize when someone has taken a sound line of reasoning and they know why something is equal to what it is, okay? Um, I just stopped writing fudge on people's papers. Now, uh, I will say, by the way, the diagrams were poorly done, were poorly done. Admittedly, it's a hard diagram to draw. I'll give you that, okay? But number one, they were too small. Number two, people often didn't put the circle on. I don't know how you solve this question without a picture of the circle on the diagram, which part one doesn't ask for, but once you get to part three, why wouldn't you draw the circle, okay? Um, the reasoning is almost impossible unless you have a, a really solid diagram, okay? Let's look at the actual marks. Uh, when you get to part one, uh, the first mark was for the gradient, the second mark was for calculating uh, what happens when you combine them and you needed to use that eccentricity A, B result somewhere, okay? Part two, um, there are a couple of ways to do this. The quickest way was to use perpendicular distance formula. And I had to laugh to myself when I was writing um, the answers to this solution. Most people did not take this path. I think one or two people did. But um, yeah, reasons to do extension two. Because where else are you going to get an absolute bay in your answer? Well, in conics, okay? So this is the quickest way. This is the quickest way. It did take a little more thought, okay? More people went this way, which is just to have the two points do... Um, the distance between two points, clearly it's longer, but it, most people are less error prone and, and you got the result, okay? Part three, okay. You really needed to mention the property, 
or the theorem, okay? The tangent's perpendicular to the radius at point of contact. There are a few other ways to do this, but either when you did it, you didn't provide sufficient reasoning, or you got there, but you spent so much time doing it, it cost you later, and you can tell, right? So I was looking for that, that was the easiest way. Part four, I've got two completely different ways of doing this, and I'm not gonna run through them in detail, I'm just gonna tell you what they were. The first way, the quickest way, was just to work out, let me come back to my diagram. We're trying to find out, uh, we're trying to show that R uh, T is the diameter, yeah? That's what we want. So I'm looking at uh, this kind of line here. Sorry, my diagram, even as good as it is, isn't perfect. That's what I'm looking for. The easiest way is to say, okay, they're collinear, and then they go through the center. That's all you need. That's a diameter, okay? Because R and T, by definition, are on the circumference. R and T, the reason why I say showing they're collinear is really easy, is because they all have the same X coordinate. So you halve the amount of work you're doing. Here's the other way that a lot of people try. I'll just show you. If you didn't go that path, what you really need to do was say, okay, I'm going to solve simultaneously between the circle and the hyperbola. There's no other way to find what R and T are, okay? Then you can find the coordinates of both points, and then you can uh, make an argument about um, angle in a semicircle by talking about gradient. That was fine. The chief way that people tried this, which just was insufficient, was making an argument from distance alone wasn't enough because if I have a circle and I've got any two points on the circumference any two points on the circumference then you can always say radius radius but that is not a diameter people okay so I get that that was hard to see it was especially hard to see if you didn't have a diagram but that line of reasoning ended up not being able to garner many marks because the argument itself was not sound okay let's move on to part C um, the ellipse this was kind of patchy. Most people I found either really got it or really did not understand where to go. Um, the easiest way is to say, okay, look at the form that the equation is given to you in. It's in the form PS plus PS dash, right? So you've got, you could read off the equation what the two foci are and the foci are useful because the center is the midpoint of those. Um, in order to do part two, you can take advantage of the same fact to work out A and B, right? Because the equation there tells you what 2A is, right? PS plus PS dash equals 2A. Once you've got A, working out B is um, not hard to find because you're going to use the relationship with eccentricity. And once you've got A and B, you've got your major and minor axis, and you can put that onto a diagram, okay? Uh, is it worth saying? You could actually finagle your way around to try and work out what that diagram looked like without working at A and B. Um, this right angle triangle here could help you, but that was a bit harder to see, and most people who tried it, it, it didn't work out. Part three, it was meant to be a, an easy mark. If you saw, okay, by inspection, it's in the first quadrant, right? So there's your uh, domain of that angle. Okay, question 14. Let's look at this rectangular hyperbola. Here is my diagram. Thumbs up for one third of a page. Um, this was very well done. You guys struggled a little bit to try and make it look right, to try and get that rectangle on there. And admittedly, that's quite difficult. But most of you who got it on there, it, it worked. Um, find the coordinates of T and M. M obviously is easy. It's just a midpoint. So there was the first mark. To find the coordinates of T, you've got to get the equations of those tangents, which means you have to derive them because it hasn't been given to you. So the first mark was for deriving an equation of a tangent. You don't need to do it twice because it's the same thing. You can just say similarly and then get you one for Q, solving simultaneously, and that'll give you your coordinates for T. And obviously more work, that's why double the marks. Part three. Okay, now two marks. Um, when you have a look at it, the logic's not that hard, right? Because it's a rectangle and the sides are perpendicular to the coordinate axes, you can work out the coordinates of the things you don't know from the coordinates of the things you do, right? Coming back here, right? What is it? You want to find uh, A and B, right? A and B. In order to get the X and Y coordinates of A and B, you simply mix and match from the coordinates of M and T. Do you see the way that I would logic that, right? So you can see the way I worked it out was to say, whoop, no, I went past it. From the diagram, A has the coordinate, the X coordinate of T and the Y coordinate of M. You just need to state that, right? Some kind of logic. If you jump straight to this, there's a good chance you didn't get that mark because you didn't show me where it came from, right? Show that they're on the hyperbola, okay? 
Once you've done that, you just have to multiply them together um, to show that they satisfy the original equation. Bam, they satisfy it, it's on the hyperbola.